this week, um, Nikki Dotes. We are entertaining Girl Talk, and with me this evening, I have Samuel Siwe at Queen Wordsmith on all channels. Yep, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's at Queen Wordsmith. At Queen Wordsmith, and we're going to be exchanging plenty of words from Sunshine Co. this evening as we unpack that side chick, side nigga behavior. Wow. Okay. So wait. What is your... How would you categorize side chick behavior? You know what? With side chick behavior, we need to explore a lot of things. We need to look at what is a side chick? What does it mean to be a side chick? The role of being a side chick. Because you can't just say, hey, hey, I'm a side chick. Or you just think, hey, hey, this person is a side chick, that time they're the main side. Hey! Is <laughs> that levels to the side? It's levels to the side. It's story. not just side or whatever. Same thing with side niggas. You could be my companion for when my main man is not around. You just never know. So people need to know their roles and to know which lane to stay in. But then also you get those that are knowing side chicks or side niggas no. and unknowing side chicks and side niggas. You can't be unknowing. You, there's no way in the twenty first century you can't be unknown. If you know your man, you will only get a text in the morning, one in the afternoon during his night time, and one in the evening. Best believe you are on rotation, you're on the schedule. <laughs> if homie disappears in the middle of the night, it, he's busy with his way, he's busy with the other side. You're not the only person on his platter. Late nights. You know, after nine. Things happen, you know, after 12 it's lunch, you know, and so forth. You just never know. If your homie does not, and I'm not going to say guy has to post you publicly or whatever. Some people like secret relationships because it's interactive. Right. But if your homie, you can see he's posting other women as his woman crushes, and you're not even trying to feature. Best believe, baby girl, <laughs> you know, I'm not even close to being the main. But what if you're the main? Like, he comes home to you. So? At least he knows where home is. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing. So, if you're looking at a side chick, back in the days, before we were even born, when our parents were, knew what a side is, a side was literally that home girl that lived there, not even in the area. She could be out of the province, <laughs> but she was never actually close to the main house. Right? <laughs> and, being not, and you not being close to the main house, it meant that you are out here, living your life there on the outskirts of society. Yeah. You will see homie your weekends, especially if you want to be as Brenda Fuzzy would say. You were a nine to five job within and then all the other hours. Oh, so much time. Visit. You know, it depends. If you're outside, obviously I'm some people country. have side chicks in the Eastern Cape, that time they in the Western Cape. Best believe you know you can see your husband your your man once every three months and so forth, because that's how the cookie comes. Yes, you can also be a side chick in a situation where the guys are in a long distance marriage because of work. So the wife and the kids are stationed in one place and you are there every day because you must play that wifely role that the wife cannot play because of distance. Yeah. Now, when it comes to side things. <coughs> but in 2018, that's not the situation anymore. 2018! Your side chick is living right next door for all Side chick can live next door or whatever, but it's not a side chick if it's all smash and grabbing. You need to understand. Sometimes you just have a sexual attraction with this person and then that's it. That's how it goes. But now the issue is when people catch feelings, when you tell them, listen, you're not the main, you, you're just the side, and when people catch feelings, I'll give you a perfect example. There's Tinder, swipe so left, swipe so right, you know? Some people are there for a good time and not for a long time. People are out there <laughs> looking for love, people catch feelings. Next thing you know, someone's like, you laid me on. No baby girl, no baby boy. No one reach you on. If you read the profile, you would have known. Yeah. So people are out here listening to RKDs, looking for love, and they're busy looking for love in all the wrong places. That's when people need to know that, you know what, I need to do an evaluation and an introspection of myself and realize the kind of relationship that I have with this person. Because mm -hmm. it's very easy to know when someone is actually completely into you and is incapable of doing so because their capacity to love and to be loved is different to what you have to offer. And it's another thing when someone is just there to have fun. That's what people don't get. Yeah. When people are just out there. And you know what? I love honesty. Because guys and girls are very honest outside. Yes. 
Yeah. But you did. Someone will tell you, listen, I've got a girl at home. But I like you. You know? I've got a wife at home, but I like you. I've got a husband. But, but that's the like trap that a lot of side chicks get into. Yes. Like, listen, girl, I am. I got a homie. Uh -huh. But, you know, we got something going on. Exactly. So why do you think And inside you chick is just like, okay, but, uh, and then it's like, then the typical lie, like, of every single side chick relationship you've ever heard of, that but I stuck. He's unhappy and he needs time to sort out. But where do you draw the line between you conjuring up these stories to make you feel good and when someone is actually telling you something? Because most guys are very honest in this day and age. They'll tell you, I have got a Nicole, mm -hmm. but Nicole and I, you know, the attraction levels or whatever else may be, you get hooked on. It doesn't mean he's going to leave Nicole for you. Best believe that. Rich would hoe around there on the on the floor. <laughs> well, how did we know Brooke, Brooke is gonna come from the onset? Because Brooke, <laughs> Brooke is, is the main of side chick. Life. But this is the thing: Brooke is flourished, and she then had babies. She created a legacy, all because she hold right with every brother, with every brother and the father. But it was okay. Baby girl has secured the bag. <laughs> the business is hers. Exactly. And now this is what people need to understand and this is what people need to get. People need to understand that no per if you allow someone to put you second, you have no right to blame the other person because you enabled this behavior. So if I come in, if you have you actually have control as to who you let in and out of your life, mm. that's what people need to understand. You determine whether you're gonna keep this person or you're gonna cut them off. There's many times I personally have been approached to be a side. I don't know if people think fat girls make good sides here or whatever else. I'm deserving to be a main. And I've never entertained it. Mm -hmm. I've never allowed a guy to make me a side. As a result, I get more respect from those type of guys than I would from any other person. Because I was like, this is me, I'm gonna play these games. Go love your wife. And then that's it. And we move on. Then you get girls who are looking actively to be sides because they think there's financial benefits. Men will never spend a lot of money on the sides unless you're popping your pussy to an extent that he doesn't even want to go home. And here's the difference. So if you think, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be a side, I'm gonna get money, I'm gonna live life, no baby girl. He is not gonna pay you to silence you. He's gonna yeah. pay you because whatever goodies you're offering is way better than the goodies that he's getting back home. And that's what you need to understand. There's a lot of things. Guys on the other hand, <coughs> male side niggas don't even know when to draw the line because you're a sad nigga, next thing you know, you want to come through, you want to be flourishing, you want to be great now, you think you're Beyonce, and whatever else, and you think you're going to overtake, no. Stephen was probably the, the longest known sad man ever to Oprah. That guy's been dating Oprah for how many years? How many times has this guy proposed to Oprah? And Oprah's like, mm-hmm, oh, Oprah. <laughs> because she knows. Just stop. Nah, I'm not playing the games. And that's the thing. But the issue is that I think one of the greatest things when you talk about sides is how the side chick will always be vindicated, whereas the side nigga will just we'll be you know, it'll be a thing that uh, you know, will keep quiet. Mm. So we have an inequality. That's why I questioned all these side niggas. They are a lot. Some will even tell you from the onset, I'm prepared to be a side nigga. Like, it's fine. I like you. I know you have a man because I see love lives in a cul de sac. <laughs> love lives in a cul de sac. <laughs> You know, you know when you, when you when you start dating fresh and whatever and whatnot. But aren't and those guys that are out to break your relationship? No. Are you going to allow a side person to come in and act like the man? No. Beyonce never like, let Michelle like say lead and distance child. Michelle always sang after Beyonce, and that's what people need to understand. You allow people to play roles and to shift themselves. Mm. The moment you allow someone to start doing more than what your boyfriend is doing, that's when you know either you leave your man or you tell this one. Stay in your lane. And it's not to offend anyone, but people really need to know to stay in your lane. And you need to know where you stand in, 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 in the whole relationship spectrum. Yeah. Because you need to understand at the top it's the main man. It's the Beyonce. Then it's family and friends. There you are there. You're probably like number three or four, depending on how much she likes the family and the friends. <laughs> right? You're there. But now what if there's like other factors like your hobbies and your sports and your work and your then you're number seven. Then you, you just go lower down. Okay. That's a, you're not gonna you're not gonna be here with main 
love him, say, oh, I love my man, I'm gonna marry this guy, no, 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 sweetie. Best believe me. And girls can also play the same tricks that guys think that they have PhDs in. In actual fact, the only reason why they think that is because they talk a lot. Females don't speak. And that's what guys need to understand. Most of the words on a daily basis are actually said by guys more than girls. That is true. Guys have spoken <laughs> too many times. Too many times. Right? I know that person like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk about game, we're talking about game. That time when you're thinking you've got a loyal girlfriend of three years, homegirl has been tapping the side nigga and coming home to you after sucking that guy's dick. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Thank you, everybody that's tuned in. Please like, share, comment, interact with us. Tell us, have you been, are you a side nigga? Have you been a side nigga? Do you want to be a side nigga? Why do you want to be a side nigga? Are you a side chick? Same questions apply to you because I'm not repeating myself. Right. -o. Carrying on, uh, in terms of uh, comments, <laughs> Nathan Abel says, I love this woman, she speaks the truth. <laughs> Candice van der Ras says, smash and grab, classic. Let's go. Ooh, I was going to say something wrong. Um, ooh, Nathan Abel says, days of our lives, amen sister. She's actually bold and a beautiful guy. Don't get yourself this confused. But we can talk about Sunday and Austin, it's fine. <laughs> Same WhatsApp group as Broken Rich. <laughs> and then Tracy Williams says hi guys. Hi. Hi Trey Trey. Um, yeah. So wait. Our topic that we are discussing this evening is side chick, side leaders. Get involved if you want. Be honest, man. Like let us know what's up with you. No, we can actually be honest. I used to be a side chick back in my days. And my yeah, really, really, really I had, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's we not, got it. It's not, it's not like, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of it. You know, I owned it. I, I had the time of my life. I used to be a sign. And, you know, the funny thing is, in actual fact, why? I loved the unavailability of a person. I cannot deal with the man that's always here. Mm. I can't deal with the guy, why have you texted me in the past hour? Uh, because I need to breathe and live. Hello, you know my oxygen, you know my lifeline, you don't feed me, you don't, you know? <laughs> so, and I was in varsity, so I was assigned to a guy. Okay, first, homie was not honest a bit there. I didn't even know how deep his relationship was. Mm -hmm. So I only found, in fact, when I broke it up was when I found out he was married, because it was back, I had aspirations mm -hmm. and dreams to be a wife at one stage in my life. Like, I planned mm -hmm. to get married. I, I didn't have a book. For what I'm going to have in my wedding. So is it a I'm Brendan. I'm not uh, stupid. <laughs> so, so I used to be assigned to this guy, and the one thing that I actually liked was the fact that when he was mine, he was mine, which is convenient for me because I didn't need to have him all the time. I'm a varsity student. Mm -hmm. I'm a full time student. I don't have time. Like I really needed to study. me. So I like the fact that I'd see you here and there. If I told you I was hungry, I knew food was going to get delivered. Or whatever the case may be, and it was fine. So you did the whole cutesy thing, and I didn't mind. For me, it was a choice and a preference. Okay. It continued, whatever. Then it got tricky because homie forgot to take his ring off, and I was like, and then who's it? What's this? <laughs> and he was like, ah, but I'm married. I'm like, no, 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 no. You never told me that. Now we have a problem because I don't want to be the reason of breaking up I have a, a marriage. Never mind dating. Dating, it's fine. But you know that you're splitting up, you know, vows and things are exchanged and there's children and then, you know, school fees situations or whatever. I got very uncomfortable with that situation and I removed myself. Yeah. I have a friend who has been a side chick for the longest of times and homegirl does not quit. It's like a full-time job for her, right? She's been a side chick. In fact, she's been with this guy for about four years now. And um, she's still side chick. Still side chick. Oh. And she's okay with it. He's married, they only see each other once every two weeks. She's okay with it because, and she's like, look, it first started out as fun, and then she fell in love with this guy. And I was like, how do you fall in love with a food damn mom, damn nice child? That home is not available because he has a whole wife and a whole house. So it's not like he's just chilling there by himself. No, he has a whole life. Yeah. And she's like, you know, when you spend, like, he's, he actually gets her. Like, out of all the guys she's ever dated, this guy understands her thinking. I mean, she's, she, she's studying, she's doing her postgraduate studies now. 
and he gets her frustrations and they can relate to each other and so forth. Okay. She will at a later stage obviously go find somebody else when it gets tough for her emotionally. Mm -hmm. But for now it's a for her it's working out. And for the guys it's working out. Like we've mm -hmm. met for four years, we've met, I met this guy and I'm like, uh, I can't even sort of break my feelings up because we are married. You know, I can't I can't make my threats oh, fuck you. I can't say that because someone's husband, so if I'm gonna fuck you up, best believe your wife is gonna be fired. Out. Exactly. I had another friend who was also assigned to a married guy. In fact it was so awkward they got into a car accident and I had to go fetch her. <gasps> Yo, there was a similar story that happened to another friend of my uh, I had to go fetch her because obviously now accident report things, mm -hmm. two passengers know me as well. And luckily it wasn't in the middle of nowhere. Luckily their accident was in a central area, so she could have been somewhere that walked past to go to the garage. Oh, luckily. So I went to a future and I was like, so is this your life? And the worst thing with her and this guy, they, four years is nothing. They even have a child together. So, well, boy, the side chick. Mm, I know. So she's like the unofficial second wife now. It's gotten to that point. Oh. Because for his travel arrangements for work and stuff, because his, his work allows him to travel quite a lot. So if he goes to like your Cape Town. Yo, this is like me distressed so many things. Fam, so many guys. Yeah, if, you know, if he. Cause I'll never marry that guy that travels. <laughs> so like he has a whole life with her. He, they, like, they have like a house together and everything. Homie bought a house, put it in her name and whatever. She's living in this house because it's in between two cities. So yeah, a full on life. It got to the point where she said she explained to me the one time when the wife called, I was like, look, I know about you, don't worry. It's okay. Um, I just asked going forward that we just be a little bit respectful in the sense that I should not have to fight him, you know, to be a father to the kids or whatever. Like it got to that point. Some wives are very accepting of side chicks. Are you a wife that would be <laughs> accepting of a side chick? I mean, 20 years of marriage, you eating lasagna every day for 20 years, then here comes a nice spaghetti bolognese dish. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> kind of the same form of pasta every day, the same form of protein, you need to switch it up. He switched it up with her. She understood. She knew when she was marrying this guy that he was a serial cheater. And marriage was not going to change him. Most wives do know and they accept and they settle. If you met your man as the side chick himself, and you go oh. married, if they do it with you, they'll do it to you. That's what Dr. Phil said, and that's, that's the cycle. The same thing with side makers. Now the problem is with side they don't have respect to that side <laughs> Side are way too respectful. I had a side nigga who tried to be the main and I'm like, no, who's it? <laughs> How fam? You are not my daily bread. You are my slab chips on a rainy day. Not my main sandwich, no love. You are nothing. Yes, no, the burger, only, there's the side. You know? There's always a side dish that you get when you eat at a restaurant. Don't be that guy who's trying to be the main steak dish when you're an, an, an attachment. A starter. You know? They don't even try to be the starter because my man's going to be the starter and the main. Ooh. And my dessert. Your ass is the side that I add on. Not even my drinks, you know? Because <laughs> the three essentials that I need when I go and eat, I get. When are you just there to fill the gap of hunger? You're filling in the void. I'm picking. Sure. That's where you come in. Mm -hmm. I mean this guy, and um, it's so strange. In fact, Wouldn't we call that a palate cleanser? No, we're not a palate cleanser. No, not even. Because when my man wake up and I don't need you anymore, he then cleans my whole palate. Okay. So, side boy, wanted to be the main, trying to act fresh <laughs> and whatever, and I was like, ah, oh, guy, okay, don't forget. <clears throat> you are that side. In fact, I call you after I said goodnight to my man. You know, you're not the one that I'm going to call first thing one. No, not the first person that I think about. You know, you the afterthought. Now I'm like, it's cold. I need someone to cuddle with. Let's cuddle. That's what I call you. I'm not going to be like, yo, babe, I wish you were here. No. Hey, are you busy? Come through. Simple. Side niggas want to be known. Now they're actually taking pictures with your hands and posting and tagging on Instagram. 
Why? <laughs> Why are you doing that? Why are you making me your woman crush every single day when you decide? Mm -hmm. I explained to you the situation. You knew what was going on, but your ass wants to be the way. Some sides do get promoted. Well done. Big ups to you. But don't forget, you get promoted. Your position is so open. Good. Somebody else must fill that vacancy. Here's what I also don't get about side chicks that do get promoted. Why are you out fighting the other side chicks? It's it's your no, man. It's, it's the ones that live in hope that fight. That's the problem. The ones that live in hope? In hope. I hope he leaves her for me. I hope that he becomes mine only. I hope that. You know, you're busy hoping and hoping. Forgetting that you were there and only was there with his girlfriend. That's the problem. Now you're fighting because you don't want to share him with any other person because now he's finally yours. Mm, okay. Mm. Makes sense. It's like going to Ocean Basket and asking for a platter for two, but you're eating for one. <laughs> Ray. Ray. <laughs> Okay, wait. Uh, let's address people here. Ooh. Thank you, everybody that is tuned in. Please continue to like, share, interact, comment, let us know. <laughs> Are you a wife or a husband? No, <laughs> a full time side. That will. Um, okay. That will. <laughs> that will entertain a full time side chick or side nigga. Yo, I got. I got. But then again, it links back to. I'm just being afraid, I think. No, for me, if I meet my man and I know he's a hoe, he's going to hoe. Being with me or being married to me and having children or whatever, it's not going to change his whole tendencies. If he is an ambassador for a hoe's life, what makes you think that a relationship status will change anything? And also, me to understand, we're single until we go to home affairs and change. So he, in a relationship, he'll continue to have single mannerisms and tendencies until he marries you. Even if he marries you, he'll still hoe around, but he'll hoe silently. Sure. Come on, you are blowing my mind with the underlying things here. Yeah, no, but it's, you know what, you can always tell with someone. You can, you can tell when someone is fragile. So I'm talking about someone that will need, like guys, masculinity is very fragile. Guys need girls to boost their ego. Guys will be in a relationship with a, a, a I don't know, like the best thing that has ever happened to them. But we'll fuck that whole thing up because he's insecure, he's got an inferior complex about him, he's feeling some type of way and so forth because emotionally he's damaged. Yeah. Right? So they go around and pick girls, yeah, hey, hey, yeah, I'm the man, I'm the man, look how many girls I have. Because that's what strength is for a guy, that's what masculinity is. The more girls you get, the more manly you become. You become. Now, what girls do, we just keep quiet. We'll have go to be like, you know, last week I slept with James, and then there was Timmy, oh my god, Timmy. And then, you know, there was Mark, yay, you know, and then there was a young little Connor and a Kayla. And a <laughs> you know? Please bear in mind. <laughs> we are using fictitious yeah. situations. No, no, it's not real. Not real. You know? And then, and then we just keep quiet, and you're like, you know what, do you go, did you do your giggles? That's all we do. We don't go, ah, my friends have to tell guys or whatever. Because the first thing that anyone is going to do, they're going to vindicate her and they're going to call her a hoe because she's open sexually yes. and she's open about her sexuality. And that's the problem. Because society is so conditioned to think that a girl that has multiple sex partners because Tommy does the monkey style, James does doggy on fleek, and the other person hits this other spot, this one does this and whatever. Because she's open and she's exploring herself sexually and she's allowing other people to come into her space, people will vindicate and call that being a hoe. Look at what happened to Jezebel in the Bible. Jezebel in the Bible was called a hoe because she was too liberal for the Jesus place. That's the thing. Yes. She was open about her sexuality. She's like, ah, why should I conform to having one day when I can have more? Yes. Woo, we got some fun. Oh, wow. Okay, so Nicole Besta says, hey ladies, I'm late but I'm here. Welcome. Um, and then Kim H says, there are wives that stick with their men even though they cheat. The reason being, as I learned from the wife, is that she is a loyal woman to her husband and vows, and it's expected of her to stick by him. 
Nobody explain to that. No. There's no manual for marriage. There's no manual no. for life. There's no manual. Maybe she's a Christian woman, that's why. And she probably goes to like the Catholic Church, the heavy, heavy, non-liberal churches. Because non liberal churches. There's a possibility. There's, a, there's this woman in the Bible called Esther. Esther is the most subservient woman that I've ever met. If I was to see Esther, either in heaven or in hell, I was going to slap her. We're going to fight. I was going to try to come out of the gates. I'm going to gates. We need to talk. What the hell, girl? What was your problem? Why are you like this? Now you're adding unnecessary pressure because you must be submissive because that's the type of person she was. Yeah. She never spoke against anything. She was very submissive. And that's the guideline on how to be a good wife. They use Esther. Which is the thing. It was a conditioning thing for people. Religion created this gender divide um, and it drove the narrative of patriarchy. That's what patriarchy yeah. is. Hence the story of Esther and you must be loyal and whatever. You're only loyal to the people that are loyal to you. Your husband holding around and whatever is not loyal to you. And there comes a time, and what people need to understand, yes, you can need somebody and you can be a whole all the damn time. But there comes a time where you put away your whole ways and you're like, I'm committing myself to this one person. This is the person that I want to be with. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a good hope, be like Jacob Zuma. Marry a whole lot of them bitches. <laughs> and live your best life. No one's going to fight. Marry them. Marry them, all of them. No one's going to fight. Everybody understands and so forth. Which is why I love, I prefer African tradition. Because if I'm going to meet a polygamist, I know full damn well I'm not going to be the only one. Maybe I'll have more rights because it's the first one. But I know all my other successes that come through, they are going to be there eventually. I had a guy approach me just two, three weeks ago to be a second wife. Would you take up that position? I can't take up the second wife. I need to be a first wife. I don't. I, I will do second wives and whatever. But I cannot be number two. Second wives need to suspect it quite a lot. Um, so I need to be the main wife. I need to have rights. The deciding factor. Yeah, I need to be like, mm, this one eats a lot. I can't remember because grocery is expensive. <laughs> She's got a bigger ass than mine, I have a problem. Okay, she got temples, I like temples, so she can come to me. I need to be able to pick and choose now. Whereas the second wife, you don't know what if your your the third wife is a Beyonce and here I am out here looking like a oompa loompa. It's game over for me, homie won't want to see me. Mm. And that's what people need to understand. It depends on what you want in your relationship, how you want things to be in your relationship. And you need to communicate. Because the, the biggest thing is that people get into relationships and they don't know who they're getting into relationships with. Or they know one aspect or one element of the person and they think they know the person. Yeah. Oh my God. Anyhow. Once again, thank you everybody who is tuned in. Um, your, can I just add a disclaimer though? In no way are we saying that being a side chick is the right thing to do. It's a choice. Firstly, mm -hmm. and secondly, it's a willing choice that you make. Thereafter, if you mm, if you are one of those side chicks with loving up and become the main chick, please, please, you cannot wanna restrain your man's whole tendencies because the man you met him as a whole is gonna remain a whole until the whole affairs changes it. Exactly. I got all of those notes out of all of your conversation. I'm cackling myself. Smash and grab. Oh, <laughs> yes. I was going to do like a dipstick kind of though. Yeah. Also, smash and grab. Side news, please stay in your lane. Just know your place. Yeah. Just know that. But I think that applies to side chicks as well. No, 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 no. no. Side chicks are the worst. Side chicks are fine. You discipline, you move on. <laughs> but the side niggas, on the other hand, are the most ungovernable. Human beings, they wasn't the EFF in Parliament. <laughs> they are uncomfortable. Some niggas need to know, yes, a guy can be a side nigga. Yes, there's some people who are voluntarily willing to be side niggas, and that's okay. But you, on the other hand, who thinks that, no, I can't do this or whatever, don't get yourself into situations that you cannot handle. And don't bark like a dog when you piss like a puppy either. <laughs> I'm not even gonna... Oh! Okay, so again, there's definitely going to be a part two to this whole side chick business. Mm -hmm. And then, thank you once again, everybody that's tuned in. Uh, if you're watching this after, uh, like, share, comment, I'll do my best to answer. Alternatively, you can follow Queen Wordsmith. That's Q U E E N W O R D S M I T H. That's on Instagram, Twitter. 
Facebook, that's how you get my profile. Facebook, that's how you get the profile. So other than that, I'll see y'all next week.